Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. Do you know one of the most interesting jobs I've ever held? Well, I was uh, what we call a benchmark engineer. So this is a group that actually buys hundreds, if not thousands of cars a year from other manufacturers, of course, and we benchmark them against our own cars and try to figure out what they're doing right or wrong so that we can improve our own product. I can't tell you too much details because of uh, confidentiality reasons, but it was probably my dream job that I held for a number of years. And in that particular group, we purchased about, on average, about 500 cars a year from all over the world, including cars that are not sold in North America. And would you believe we actually bought three of the same cars so that we can do three things for each of these cars. One is to take it apart and break it right down to the components, including like power window switches, engines and components so we can do um, a part to part comparison and to benchmark that as an engineer second type of testing was to then crash test these vehicles and once again compare the performance of crash worthiness against the cars that uh, we had and the third group was the most interesting which is to do the benchmarking comparison in terms of driving the feel the performance all that stuff that makes car a good car and I was one of the lead engineers in that particular group. And so I got to drive different cars every single day from hundreds and hundreds of different selections and do a direct comparison and come up with a detailed engineer's recommendation on what to change in terms of design or engineering or technical specification so that the product we were producing would be better than that benchmark product. That was perhaps one of the most insightful job I ever had because I drove so many different cars in such a short time. And the definition of what we call world-class car or best-in-class became crystal clear when you drive them back to back under many different circumstances. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because some car manufacturers do a better job of benchmarking and then implementing those lessons learned than other manufacturers. In fact, I would say Honda, of all the different types of manufacturers out there, and perhaps Mazda as well, do an amazing job of doing benchmark work and then taking everything they learn from the benchmark project and applying it to the next development work so that whatever car or truck or vehicle they design for the next iteration becomes better than that benchmark product. And the reason why I believe Honda does a better job of benchmarking its product than anyone else, including Toyota, it's because it shows up in the actual performance of the final product. Even though every car manufacturer have their own benchmarking group in which they do testing, evaluation, and product comparison, not all of them are able to take what they've learned and apply it to the actual product lineup. They can't seem to do that transition from the learning to applying very well. But Honda does it really, really well, as you can tell from the new Honda Civic. I have been driving around in a 2022 Honda Civic hatchback with a manual transmission. Then I realized, wow, these guys really benchmarked the heck out of every product out there. And this Civic is better than anyone else. And to achieve that kind of monumental result, Honda would have benchmarked the Civic against cars that are much more expensive. So for example, um, what most companies will do is to benchmark their product against other cars in, in a similar market, in a similar industry. So for example, Civic compared that to the Mazda 3 or Toyota Corolla, uh, or let's say Nissan Sentra. But the car companies that really know how to benchmark well, will compare their cars to something that's more expensive. The Honda engineers, for example, might compare their developmental Civic to let's say um, BMW 2 Series or even 3 Series or Audi A3 or Audi A4 or maybe even Mercedes C-Class. So what they can do is try to bring down some of those level of refinement that is evident in much more expensive vehicles down to the Civic lineup. And you can clearly see that result because the Civic kind of drives like expensive European model that costs at least 50% more. And yet it's the humble Honda Civic. And as a former benchmark engineer who compared hundreds of cars and who still drives hundreds of cars every year right now, you know what? I'm actually taken back by how good the Honda Civic is. In fact, I would say the Honda Civic uh, hatchback I'm driving right now with a manual transmission 
is the best subcompact car out there. And the manual transmission is absolutely extraordinary in its ability to provide crisp, crisp feel, very sharp uh, shifting, and a light but very effective clutch. It's a car by which all other cars have to be measured now, at least in terms of a subcompact car category. Now don't take my words for it. You should go and test drive the Civic, then go and drive the Toyota Corolla, go and drive the Mazda 3, the Nissan Sentra, and you will know what I mean by the fact that Civic is one or two notch above all the other models. Although I will say Mazda 3 comes pretty close because I really like the way that car drives as well. Now let me take you to the Honda Civic that I've been talking about and show you the exterior, the interior, and the driving feel and explain to you why I think that new Civic is the byproduct of a truly amazing benchmark project. So I have the 2022 Honda Civic hatchback behind me with a six-speed manual transmission and they've done almost everything just right. I truly do believe that the Honda engineers spent way more time and resources benchmarking this than they ever did before. So I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why I believe Honda engineers benchmarked the heck out of this Civic because I think it's that good. So let me walk you through those 10 things right now. The first evidence that this thing has been benchmarked like crazy is the body alignment and the fit and finish. As you guys know, I always do this alignment check with the panels and not too many kind of subcompact cars do that well in this price range. But if you look at this Honda, the gap here is about four millimeter, maybe even 3.5, which is world class. Usually it's about five millimeter. And I don't see any kind of misalignment between the panels here to here or between the door and the front fenders. All the way to the back, the alignment is almost perfect. Again, unheard of for a car in this price range. So evidence number one, the body panel fit and the body panel alignment is much better than the competitors' cars in this market. Reason number two is a paint job on this Honda Civic. Hard to believe, again, how good a quality of the paint job is. No pigmentation issue, no orange peel. It's glossy and bright. Every panel has been painted correctly. And uh, you know what? It's shockingly good. <laughs> Most manufacturers will not spend the time to get it right to this level because it just costs uh, too much money to set up everything in this fashion, but the paint job is absolutely excellent. The third evidence I wanna point out as to why I believe they have benchmarked this product more than any other I've seen it's even uh, minor things like the way that uh, door closes and the sound it makes, it's uh, really well done. So it kind of closes like the way that uh, very expensive German cars do. So let's uh, take a look here. It closes with a nice thumb. Oops, I locked it by mistake here. <laughs> it has a really good solid thunk, which uh, is often missing in kind of a subcompact car. Even more so the rear hatch here. Let me close it. Thump. Wow, solid uh, and good door seal and good design. And you can tell again, alignment is really excellent. The fourth reason why this car is so well benchmarked and so well engineered is just a beautiful engine. It revs easily to um, red line. It, um, it's just a beautiful music to my ears in terms of how the engine responds to my accelerator. Um, it's always been one of the strengths of a Honda, of course, but uh, in this new Civic, it's kind of match made in heaven. Uh, the combination of an easy to rev engine, a good response, uh, and more than sufficient power and torque brings fun to drive factor to this Civic in a way that other manufacturers have not been able to do. I love this engine and it works so well in this new Civic. The fifth point is the transmission or more specifically the six speed manual. Super easy to shift, very light clutch, uh, very engaging to drive. And uh, it doesn't matter what condition the road is, I can shift quickly up and down with absolute ease. This is like one of the best transmission out there. And I've driven all kinds of hot hatches and some compact cars out there, even some claiming to be uh, designed or engineered by high performance engineers. And actually this Civic is one of the best. As I mentioned, they benchmarked really well against some of the competitors. And I can say this is one of the smoothest shifting transmission I have come across. 
It kind of remind me in the old days when Honda had cars like the S2000 with a short stroke transmission or manual. And uh, this is sort of like that kind of feeling, just really uh, lively, easy to shift. The clutch is uh, just the right um, travel uh, and it's a perfect uh, ratio for me in terms of the gear ratio. So beautifully engineered uh, transmission. I love this manual and I can't wait to drive the, um, the Civic Type R because that one is going to be a rocket to drive. The sixth point I wanted to bring up is the handling. A lot of car companies really struggle to get the right amount of road feel and the steering effort, but Honda has it just right. Good balance of the steering effort, lots of uh, feedback from the road, and uh, you know what? It almost kind of feels like the old hydraulic steering because it's so well calibrated. Very difficult to get this right, but Honda engineers have uh, designed the whole mechanism so that it provides a type of steering effort and the communication between the road and the driver uh, at a very high level. It's obviously not meant to be a sports car, uh, but you know what? This is definitely the benchmark and all the other manufacturers need to pay attention because the steering effort and the handling in this Civic is one of the best in the world. The seventh point I wanted to raise is the ride. It is a little bit firm and bumpy, but compared to the Corolla A-Spec I was driving recently, which is also supposed to be kind of a sports-oriented uh, vehicle, this thing rides like a magic carpet. It's smooth, it's quite comfortable, it's quite forgiving, um, but yet on the firm side, which is what I like. Um, other vehicles I've driven recently, like a Nissan Sentra and a Toyota Corolla, just have a really rough um, ride and they just are not as composed as this one. Uh, once again, kudos to the Honda engineers who calibrated the suspension carefully to provide a good uh, flat around the corner feel and maintaining front to drive feel without making the ride too stiff or unmanageable. The eighth evidence why I believe they've done such a good job with benchmarking uh, is the fact that they've done uh, such an excellent work with ergonomics and the overall design of the dash. But even like the low tactile feel of the buttons here and these knobs that has a bit of a notch in the center. I mean, to get that kind of details all done correctly, uh, my goodness, will take many hours of engineers work and they spent that time to get it right. So every button you press, every knob you touch have the right tactile feel and even the switches on the steering, the power window switches, the ergonomics is excellent. And uh, again, they would have spent a fair amount of time to get it right to this level of standard. So very impressive interior design. And uh, it's again, better looking and better designed than almost anything else out there in this price range. The ninth reason why they've done such a good job with this Civic is the overall comfort in terms of the seat, the amount of cushion, the size support, uh, even the grip of the steering. There's a little bit of a subtle softness that is reminiscent of something you will find a very expensive European model. A lot of car companies cannot get the um, leather on the steering feel right, but this will have just the right amount of uh, softness, but yet good grip. A good stitching many manufacturers don't get the stitching correctly uh, but smooth and even in my lexus is 500 the stitching isn't very good but this one is fantastic quality so in terms of the comfort of the seat the way everything feels the tactile feel and the general um, comfort when you're driving this and all of the things they've done to make sure that the interior is top notch is very evident from every possible angle. So I think uh, Honda engineers spent an uh, enormous amount of time getting every little details correct. Uh, and this is a type of effort and time that you don't see too often uh, with many other car companies. Uh, even Toyota sometimes skips these details and do not get it right. Even the fit and the finish of the materials and the way all the components come together. You know what? It's first class. The tenth and the final conclusion I want to make is the fact that this Honda Civic, when you drive it every day, like I have been doing for last uh, week or so, um, the way everything comes together, the steering, the handling, the ride, the way engine performs, the transmission, even things like the visibility and the ergonomics, all comes together in a way that no other subcompact cars have done. This is by far the world's best 
subcompact car for the money and it is now the new benchmark in this class even if you were to pay another ten thousand dollar or so you're not going to find something that is as balanced as fun to drive and as engaging as this honda civic for the money and this is what the benchmarking project is supposed to accomplish is that after comparing to many many cars around the world you design develop and create a car that's better than any one of them and that's exactly what honda did amazing job honda i love this civic and i can't wait to drive the other variation of this uh, model such as the upcoming acura integra and of course the honda civic type r thank you so much for watching everyone i hope you learned something from my video a lot more to come your way i'm signing off for now Take care and thank you.